everybody uh, in the garage back with another video um, this is a make tracks and it is my second or third make tracks I think I've had three I, I bought one kept it bought another one um, that I just fixed up it was part of a multi deal and sold it and then I kind of regretted selling it and I wanted to add this to my Williams row so Got another one. I got this from, I think, Ben, either at, Co at Coin Op Amusements at some point. And I'm just video documenting here. This side is really good, no hand wear here. The art is in pretty good shape, some bumps and bruises, but not bad at all. The other thing that I'll point out, sorry for the reflection, is there was two types of make tracks cabinets. This is one of the earlier versions. It's got a vertical, the monitor is almost, you know, perpendicular to the floor so it is almost straight up it's not laid back at all it's just vertical like that and also the control panel overlay is unique the earlier Williams make tracks has this unique this design here and I'll link to a thread where I actually removed this from my old one because my original one I had was identical it was like one of the early versions like this one. It had this type of control panel overlay. It's never been reproduced. I have a new old stock um, control panel overlay, but it's not the same, which kind of sucks. So it would be great if we could kind of, somebody could stitch this back together somehow and make a reproduction, but I don't know, because that looks cool. Um, just let's look at the cabinet. I haven't really inspected this since I bought it, so looks like we've got some security bolts. You know, got to fill some holes in the in the uh, front kick plate area there. I don't know what the heck that is. It's like almost like an S video or not an S video, but some type of DIN connector. That's that's crazy. I wonder what that is for. Um, we'll take a look on the inside. There's another hole down here. So you need to patch a few holes on the front there. Let's see on the inside. Coin mechs are gone, but lockout coils are still there. Um, that looks okay. That looks okay. I think I already removed the Make Tracks PCB and got it working. A little bit of side wear here with the left hand. Not surprising, most people are right-handed, and that's why you probably see on this other side, there's barely any hand wear on that side. I will probably try to get some paint just to touch up that just a little bit, but otherwise, if I back up a little bit, I mean, most of it looks good. Even the bottom of the cabinet is not that bad. Maybe down here at the bottom there, I got my little, it's cold, it's kind of like a November time frame, so a little bit of fraying at the bottom on that side, but almost nothing down there at that side. Okay, and I think the, there's the key, I do have the key. So just wanted to take a look at it. It is pretty nice looking as far as condition of the cabinet and everything all right got the back door off looks like a little bit of work needs to happen on the interlock switch i don't know why they did that but it's a 4600 monitor four five three zero three five nine i don't know if the numbers are going to match kind of interesting there's the neck board there so this does look like an original monitor, 4600 well, Wells Gardner. Um, not the original power supply, so that's something that was modified because it did come normally with like a Defender style power supply, I believe. There is some stuff sitting in the bottom here. Papers, a lot of dust, cobwebs that need to be cleaned out, but absolutely no water damage. Um, that's where the PCB goes. The PCB slides underneath the monitor right there um, from the front, actually. I know it's kind of hard to see, but right there. 
So you lower the control panel and you put the PCB in there from the front. Kind of interesting that they did it that way. All right, cool. Um, just filming the inside. I'm gonna get to taking this thing apart, which is kind of nice. Is actually I need to if this. Uh, gosh, what do you call it? Monitor shelf is the same as a Cinestar. I actually need to copy it because my Cinestar is actually missing it. And I wonder, I'm going to test it in my Cinestar to, um, and see if this will work for it as a template potentially. All right, that's it. Be back after I take everything out. All right, get everything out of the cabinet. There's the harnesses out. Still need to clean up the power supply. And then I just wanted to show some of the stuff that came out of the bottom here. Some type of adapter, which is kind of interesting. $6. I don't know what that was. Um, don't know what that is. Probably a couple dollars worth of quarters. Like $3. Coin door. I was just looking to see if there was um, any other serial number information. I don't see anything. And there's two stamps on the front of the of the cabinet. And you can't really read it very well. It's like 990359. This one says 59 up above too. But it was kind of weird, so nine nine something okay, three five nine. Five five three zero three five nine. That might be it. Alright, got the uh, cabinet on its side, gotta fill some of these holes here. There's a hole there, hole there, and I have my little my little dowels, as you can see, to kind of put it in there that one will work there maybe make that hole a little bit bigger there definitely have to make that hole bigger there and I also need to I think drill this out because it came from they drilled the control panel latch all the way from the outside as you can see right here there's two holes right there so I'll, I'll probably drill just a little bit and put something small in there. But look at the bottom here, actually. How often do you see a Williams cabinet that actually has the original leg holders on there? That's crazy. The bottom is a little messed up, but not, honestly, not too bad. I might even leave it. I don't know how much I want to screw with it um, because it is pretty decent, so. That's unusual for a Williams cabinet. All right, got the make tracks in the basement. And um, as you can see here, I'm still working on some paint, but it's getting ready to get real cold outside and I figured I'd get it down here. Um, most everything's ready and prepped. I did go with like a gloss black um, oil-based paint on the front. I had initially painted it satin, but um, with rattle cans, and I just didn't like the way it looked. Um, I think the, the gloss oil-based paint or satin oil-based paint, if you can get it, um, I don't know, there's, there's something, something different about it. And I think it looks really good. It's not perfect, obviously, but you can't see the holes. Um, but it does reflect pretty good. And I just use a regular foam brush to put it on. And it you know levels pretty good <clears throat> and everything, so. All right, so not quite. Let's see what else. I might still need to cut a, a little bit of the T molding slot. I might use a Dremel for that. Let's see here. And all right. So there was a um, restore thread on Clov, and um, a guy listed the paint that he used. It was this base UL223. It was supposed to be bare paint. I went to Home Depot, gave them this, but they didn't have this UL223. And so I ended up with this bare satin enamel um, interior, exterior, urethane, alkyd, whatever. And you can see 
it's more like peach with that color. So not quite a brown paint moment for me, but um, not something I'm going to be able to use. So this is like a waste of 20 bucks. And I'll just take it off real quick so we can see it. So you can see the difference in color there. It's it's too light to use that. And I went back to Home Depot and they said they they would, I don't know, I might do it again, but the kid that was working there wasn't able to really help me to try to, you know, darken it up a little bit. Um, so I went to, what did I grab? Grab some uh, paint swabs here. And the Inferno is almost too orange, but this Pimento is a little bit lighter, and I think I might be able to make that work if I take that back in there. It's not perfect, but it is a little bit lighter. So if I have, I could always have them potentially darken that up by like 10% or something, and it, it'll probably match up pretty good. But I did... Um, you can see here I used some magic eraser and that brought out it cleaned up a lot of the scuff marks but it definitely also you know caused a little bit of damage to the paint so you definitely want to be careful um, with that so um, that's it basically oh I did paint the back doors oh I haven't put them on yet though so I'm going to do that start putting things back together probably wire up the correct power supply and do some other stuff so just wanted to catch you up not sure when i'm going to do that painting part might be in this video might not i'm not sure more documentation here um i had to remove this lockdown bar over here so i'm gonna have to grind this down and you know to sand it or something and then uh bond to that the other thing is there was two different kinds of um coin returns or whatever you want to call these coin buttons or something but you can see this red one is probably not original it's in a plastic case actually the screws um, broke some of the plastic um, on where they were holding it in this one's metal but it says stern on it but you can see that it, there's no it's metal and it's a smaller coin button so if you look at that versus eject button, I guess is what you call it, <clears throat> versus that. See how this one has the cover on the side and this one relies on, just has a little piece like this and relies on the cover itself to be the other side of the, the coin slot. So, anyway, that's something else that I'm going to have to fix. The other thing is one of these came off, so I'm going to have to probably put some JB Weld on it and try to get that stuck back on. Other than that, de-rust, clean, paint, sand, you know, normal coin door crap. Just getting stuff ready to, to be put back in. Um, I know you can't really see that, but um, I ran these through de-rusting. And then I ran them through a tumbler, and I will prime them now and paint them, and then we'll use have nice painted stuff to go back into the cabinet. All right, just a little more documentation here. I didn't actually um, get all of the bolts de-rusted. I had to remove some from the control panel and stuff. And <clears throat> I'm still figuring out my process, but I've been experimenting with I've done evapor rust and then just you know do sandpaper on the outside. But I a lot of times if you do evapor rust, it will also darken the metal and even vinegar. So in this case, I actually put um, all of this in vinegar for like I did it overnight actually. Um, it got all the rust or most of it off, but it was really dark. It made the made the um, the metal real dark. Then I used, tumbled it, and this 
I don't know what kind of media this is, but I tumbled it in there for a couple hours. Then I tumbled it in a walnut shell. And now I'm just going to kind of use my little strainer. I don't, I don't remember where I got this idea from. It was kind of like you just uh, shake it like this from your walnut shell. It's just like a screen, I think, that I put on. Um, cut up. God, I can't talk. <laughs> cut up um, the top off of a Home Depot bucket and then cut a hole in the lid and basically put um, some screen on there. And it's pretty easy to, to get all the walnut shell out. And you can see how, how nice and shiny like everything comes out. Now maybe some of the inside of the nuts, I'm just looking. You gotta kinda dig in to you know get the walnut shell out of the where the Phillips head goes. But uh, not too bad. Whoops. So just figured I'd show my my little process here. I think the bolts, I mean they come out super smooth. It is still more gray than than like shiny silver, but I'm going to paint them black anyway. So, that's it. Alright, more documentation here. Um, I did get the back door on and it looks pretty good. I didn't bother patching the little holes that were in it. And I did not paint the inside, just the outside. Um, but it looks good. And one of the things that I've come to appreciate a little bit, or kind of the details, I guess or the minutia <clears throat> is a properly wired coin door and then some of the hacks they do and stuff um, as an operator just to get the game working again. So I think I um, showed this earlier in the video, but they basically spliced in um, to the AC line, which isn't that bad. I haven't tried it with the interlock switch to see if the interlock switch controls it, but I think it does. Um, but this is to power up the um, the replacement power supply they had, which was this thing right here. Um, excuse me. But the downside of doing that is you lose your um, lockout coils, which is you know original, and there it's like twenty. This red wire here is like twenty-seven volts or something, and then you lose your six point three volts AC which we'll actually cover in the video. It's actually probably going to be putting out more like 9 volts. We might actually have to put in 12 volt bulbs, um, but we'll cover that. I'm missing the Defender style power supply there and then ground. So you're missing your coin door lights as well as your coin lockouts. Um, the other thing they did is the 5 volts that's supposed to run to the coin meter, I don't know what they did. They like cut the, the cable there. If you can see on the, the harness on the other side, it's cut. And then at the coin door, I had to actually kind of undo this a little bit. It's cut there as well. So I'm gonna have to run from this coin harness to make it original, run or splice in 5 volt cable come through this harness you know into this right here and down into the little diode connector because the 5 volts is um, on the coin meter is supposed to be right here I checked this is a 6 volt DC coin meter it says 30 30,000 plays on it um, and I just want to make it original I did clean up, sorry for the shadow there. Um, I did clean up some of the wiring and all the wiring is kind of like sticky and goop. I don't know what the heck where this thing was, but it's very, even when I clean the harness, it's not perfect. There's still like some, some, you know, goo or stickiness and stuff on the harness itself. Um, but I don't want to damage it or I did soak it, which some people say you shouldn't do, but whatever. 
I needed to get it cleaned as best I could. It was gross. Um, so just, just some of the stuff that I'm working on, just uh, fixing the coin door, wiring. Um, one of these, which one is it? This thing here is actually, this almost seems like it's disconnected, but yeah, it's dis disconnected from the coil. So one of the, the lockout coils could be jacked up anyway, um, which isn't good. Coin door meter. I did some, this is extra wiring for if there was three coin slots. So I basically that's the lockout coil power uh, another coin door light that we could potentially no, I guess I couldn't tap in. I, I could tap into this and light the buttons potentially somewhere what else I guess that's all I wanted to talk about just some of the minutia of having to rewire this I'm gonna you know, undo this hack splice that back in you know normally undo this get a DC um, a Williams power supply and some people would say, why go through all the trouble? Just hook it up. I might, I don't know. I think I'm gonna do it. All right, kind of fits and starts here. Um, I went ahead and wired up the original power supply because I was just curious to see if it would work. And I hooked up a five ohm resistor for load. And let's see here if I turn on my, can you guys see that okay? <clears throat> I've already adjusted it with um but we'll power it on because I did hear something from the the power supply that I thought was kind of interesting. And I also did just want to check like that I had this wired up correctly, you know, my on-off switch. Um and so this is pulled out, my interlock. Switch it on. And we have five volts right there. And listen to what you hear in here. It's going to get a little bit louder. It's almost like something's cooking, or I don't know if it's a capacitor. But it's running with a 5 ohm load that's like, a, what, a 1, one um, 5 ohm. 5 ohm resistance is like a 1 amp load. Um, so it's not too bad, but listen to that. Let me check the 12 volts. All right, we're about 11.93, negative 4.7. We might need to go a little bit higher on the five volts if we plug in a PCB, but it does seem to be working um, relatively well, but just the, the noise I thought was interesting. I don't know how long it'll last, and I might take it apart, but I'm not going to really troubleshoot. I'll just stick a new power supply. I don't even know if they're, it's not really worth repairing these, but um, listen to that. All right, that's it. I'll eventually, you know, I think I do have a spare Defender board set, but I don't have the crowbar um, add-on board, which you really should have. I mean, it's not as good as this, but it does give you the, the power for the lockout coils and the um, 6.3 volts. But we could always wire a negative five volt to power the um, lamps if we wanted to. I don't know, I'll figure something out. All right, so just messing around. I slid the uh, PC into the PC shelf that you basically can't see there, I guess. Um, but it just slides right into the shelf here. Put the monitor in, hooked it up. I never had powered this thing on. I haven't touched the monitor, tested the power supply. It probably needs to be adjusted up a little bit. Plugged in the PCB right there. This is like the little holder there. Just to hold it in. You don't need to do anything with that. So let's throw caution to the wind and see if this thing works. No idea if this monitor works. Ooh. I hear some snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> hmm. Looks like, sounds like the game's playing. I hear a speaker and everything. Oh, we got some collapse or something. No, horizontal hold is messed up. 
there's so much screen burn it's kind of hard to tell so that's a vertical hold actually let me adjust it and then come back the other thing is I don't know if the, oh I guess it is yeah there's the maze so I just need to adjust the hold probably um, they had replaced or done something and just screwed I, I wired it back up like it was but I don't know if I mentioned that in the video already but some weird stuff going on not weird but um, there's no I don't believe that was original and so I have to replace it or just leave it like that for the marquee light. All right, there it is. It seems, the picture seems a little dim, but I have a bright light shining on it. And it could definitely use some adjustments. So I might put the tube restorer on it. I might recap it, not sure. Um, but we'll definitely adjust the colors and stuff. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's working, so I'm not, not enough, no reason to do too much on it. It's kind of like over overdriven here, I think, a little bit. That green is probably a little too dark. And yeah, so anyway, I'm going to adjust it, the monitor, and then... All right, just temporary back. wired stuff up a little bit. You can see, yeah, the, the screen burn is really bad, and the pink... Oh, you can't even see it on the monitor. It's like completely washed out. But the other thing I found interesting is maybe I didn't have a load on it after all. The power supply seems to be quieter now. It was maybe it wasn't enough of a load. I, I don't know. That was kind of weird of of what was going on there, making that noise because it sounds fine on the power supply. So I don't know. Anyway, okay, so I need to, uh, you know, this control panel, I think I highlighted in the beginning of the video, it's not in the greatest shape, but it is the more rare original control panel overlay. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. And it also has the original joystick. So this is the first time I'm playing it with the original. Um, I'll take it apart and show you guys of the four-way joystick that it came with. Pretty interesting. Get the coin door wired there. There's no coin up noise. And still need to adjust the monitor, so. And turn up the volume a little bit. All right, more work to come. All right, so I always don't know how much I'm filming and stuff like that, um, or how much I want to film. But I went ahead, grabbed the monitor out of the game, put it on the bench. I'll talk about the chassis. It looks like some work has been definitely done on this monitor in the past, um, but I went ahead and put it on the tube restorer. And when I went to check the guns, it definitely, you know, is missing some, you know, it's a little messed up. So um, this is a Rollin tube, a v, VJ BMP 22 or something like that. Um, but Video one, negative 100 bias, filament volts. Let's go to our, let's see here, how's that? No G1 short, no HK short, and now we go to our low tracking. I've covered this a hundred times, so I'm just documenting it. I'm not gonna explain everything. We adjust our guns, and we cannot get anything into the cutoff level at negative 100 bias at negative 84 nothing negative one I mean negative 68 we finally get something on our red and blue guns at negative 52 but nothing on our green gun still nothing on our green gun still nothing on our green gun and that's probably why those colors seemed a little whacked right I mean we're not getting anything on our green gun Let's go back and let's see what our emission is. No emission on our green gun. So this is definitely going to be an interesting one to restore. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit, you know, the green gun. There's, it's showing basically no emissions at all. Um, so this is where you definitely want to get to the restore functionality, potentially even a reju. But we're going to go do the restore first. All right, so I back. went to my green gun here. Um, got the restore on green right there. 
and I'm doing low function. All right, there we go. All right, see if we get any emissions on it. All right, that actually helped. It's amazing that actually brought some emissions. And it got, so just doing the low um, helped that gun out. It was, it was kind of weird. <laughs> But let me go ahead and do low on all the guns and come right. back. I did um, the restore function low on all of them. We got no shorts. Nothing at no um, cutoff on um, negative 100. And I can adjust them all into the cutoff range with good tracking at negative 152. Then we move it back to 100, check our emissions and it looks pretty bad. So I'm gonna go a little bit harder on these because this tube is pretty burned, so even if I happen to go overboard, which I doubt I will, um, you know, I'll replace the tube anyway. One of the things you should watch, and I'm gonna do the blue gun last here, is you see how my, my red LED is not getting all the way up to, you know, the midway point. It's kind of only getting barely into that cutoff range, which is a little weird. Um, that's kind of, I don't know what that's telling me, but, and now we have a little bit of leakage or resistance on the G1 short test. Well, the green gun's definitely getting, got better there. Much better on the green gun now than it was before. Emissions a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and go to high, maybe even extended. We'll see. All right, I hit it with the um, high each gun, and we're still getting better. So I'll G1 shorts. I let the guns cool off a little bit. Go to negative 100 bias. HK short looks good. Cut off low tracking. Nothing. Turn off my turn up my cutoff levels, which is adjusting really the G2 voltage. Um, and then we go down to negative. 84 bias and we have some life at negative 68 where we weren't before but still I can't get everything into the cutoff only one the red gun and then when I go to negative 52 with the extended cutoff test much better than what we were seeing initially so we're getting better every time we're not getting worse in the extended cutoff so what that means is we can keep on going I mean I can keep getting more aggressive with the guns until you know we are happy with the results or if I actually get negative biases worse um, in my extended cutoff test I mean if I um, is worse then obviously we want to stop go to our emissions not great at negative 100 but definitely better than what we were so I'm gonna go to the extended and come okay back. so I've banged on it a few times extended back to normal, reactivate. I think I have it really it hasn't improved much um, from my first improvement. So you know, G1 short looks good. I let the guns cool off. Um, HK short's good, obviously, which is good. Now I'm in negative 52 volts. Let's go back to 100, negative 100, which is the tube specs. Do our extended cutoff, nothing in negative 84 little bit of something almost a little bit worse at negative 68 now because I'm not getting anything on my green and blue guns and green isn't full go at negative 52 but we can adjust these into the cutoff and that's pretty good I mean everything is adjusted into the cutoff we have good tracking which means none of them are more than like 10 or 20 percent um, need more than 10 or 20 percent more G2 voltage. Um, then we'll go to our emissions. Looks good, obviously, at negative 52, but not great at negative 100 um, bias. But one of the things I'm going to do is go back to negative one, uh, 52 negative bias and just do the emission life test. We have good tracking, obviously. 
and you can see the green gun decreases much faster than the blue and, and red so there's definitely not a lot of life left on the green gun especially um, even though it looks like the emission levels are pretty decent once you press the emission life and de which decreases the heater voltage you know the the green gun you know goes down pretty fast so with that said I'm just gonna leave it alone I think it's as good as it's gonna get and if I can't adjust the colors well enough um, I'll go ahead and do a tube swap but I bet it's gonna look fine even with these results that we saw here all right mine got it hooked up to the TPG here and really minus the screen burn the colors well I know it's a little it looks blurry to you but it's not there you go focused um, it looks pretty good now you know because the screen burn the whites look well you probably can't tell but the whites look a little off there's a little bit too much green right now I can see the green being driven a little bit too much but the cutoffs when you see this white gray darker gray black and I'm able to adjust that into with just using the um, shoot what uh, the brightness or the flyback control there's two brightness or at least two brightness there's the flyback and there's the um, wow that's not focusing at all but look at that screen burn that makes it look pretty bad but as far as color I got green, I got red, I got blue, you know, I got good cutoff. It's just that screen burn. I mean, there's good gray, white. So I'm going to put it in the um, cabinet and then do a further adjustment because you can see that green. Maybe you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see the green um, being overdriven. So I do need to uh, adjust it to the bo colors on the on the board set. All right, let me put it back in the game. Before I put it in the game, let me show. Basically, you can tell, you can see that cap back there. That is not an original cap. So that, some caps have been replaced, but some have not, which is kind of interesting. So it's kind of like, maybe they re there's like a cap that's been replaced, that big fatty right there, that's not original. And I see something written on the, frame it says something mats mat something m-a-t-t-s mat slots uh, i don't know something okay and then it says 1010 which could be um october of 2010 somebody repaired it i'm not sure which is interesting and that but there's a missing screw right there um, otherwise the monitor is working so I'm not really going to mess with the chassis it is dirty though obviously you can see look at that dust right there um, but yeah I mean the darn thing's working so I'm gonna leave it alone and because the colors probably gonna look okay even though that wicked bad screen burn I'm just gonna leave it I mean the tube works so for now anyway all right so i didn't even adjust the colors yet and obviously i turned the lights off so that's a little bit different but way better i mean if you can see it on the camera the green the whites the blues everything is just much better um so i still need to adjust the colors a little bit but wow does that look a lot better very nice can't live without a tube restore. All right, I'm getting ready to put together um, or do something with the fluorescent light. So I removed the uh, that one light over there, and then I looked at my Cinestar, um, you know, cover to see if that would actually fit in there, and it's actually quite a bit more narrow. I, it's hard for me to show in the camera, but like, let me see if I can just set it in there. You kind of see. The gaps on the side there. I know that shadow's terrible, but th it's like this make tracks cabinet is actually n more narrow than the Cinestar cabinet. Right, so just this. for documentation's sake, I'll measure it here. It's um, basically 24, 
and a half inches inside to inside as you can see there and I don't know if not blocking the light you know from the back is going to wash out the monitor more these Williams games are designed to have like a cascading light with the gap that's here by the speaker grill between the speaker grill and the um, mark um, bezel it's supposed to have a little bit of a gap so that light kind of comes down and shines on the control panel um, I think I've talked about that before but um, at least temporarily be, until I can find what I want to do if I want to replace it with a normal fluorescent and a metal thing but since I don't have it and this isn't like a super desirable game I'm not going to really worry about doing too much to make it 100% original the other thing is the speaker almost seems like it needs to be turned like the speaker wires facing this way because there's not a lot of slack and that would give it at least another three inches of slack if I move the speaker. So I don't know if it was ever removed or not. Um, but that's interesting. So let me um, plug it in and use some wire ties because this is kind of temporary and see what it looks like. All right, I would say it's probably not ideal not to have something blocking out that backside because it, it is kind of nice. It does show some you know lights up the working area uh, if you ever needed to work on the monitor or adjust it it's nice to to have more light back there. i think i am going to do like maybe put some cardboard or something where the normal back support would be for the fluorescent light um, i'll do something to kind of block that light out there all right i did um move the speaker undid the speaker and then turned it basically 180 degrees um, and also painted a little piece of cardboard from a used postal chipping box. Painted that flat black. And I'm going to put that, probably going to staple it from the back side because I think it'll be All easier. Right, so I'm back with this here. I got the painted cardboard back there. I got my wire ties. This disconnects right here so it's, it's easy. Even if I wanted to solder those together, but I might just leave it like that. Let's see, move that a little bit more into the middle. Speakers moved. Um, this right here I had to... What's interesting is that seems to be a horizontal Williams monitor uh, bezel or surround or whatever you want to call it. it is, I don't think it's the ver vertical ones because the vertical ones should come all the way, you know, cover this gap here, over, I think. Um, but I, I believe I looked at old pictures of my original make tracks, my first make tracks I had, and it looks the same way. So maybe they just used a horizontal monitor surround in there. I ended up uh, putting a screw in the back side on that to hold this lower side in, but not the top part here. I don't know why that's so. I think that's just pushed. It's so tight because it's pushed by the monitor from the back. Um, all the way against it so it's kind of like right up against it versus the top where there's a gap there but this side screwed in and you can see the screen burn and it looks pretty bad but when I put the bezel on it's tinted and you can't really see it that well let me see if I come around to this back side and let's see here just kind of showing how it's how it's mounted in there that monitor surround I screwed it in right there and then you can see up at the top how far it goes up and there's my little piece of black cardboard right there all right I'm um, gonna put the bezel on and just you know random stuff you know that Did a little with. armor all protectant on that monitor surround which is plastic kind of Definitely made it hopefully blacker and stuff. So anyway, just showing you. All right, that's with the without the spotlight on, obviously, and you can see like you can't really see, especially from like this distance here because it's tinted. So let's go ahead and I think turn it on. Let's see, I don't have the control panel on. Or 
or not turn it on. Oh yeah. Let's see what we get. There's the marquee light. I think that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of light coming from the sides, but pretty good. And then there's make tracks. Probably need to adjust it a hair up and maybe adjust the focus. I'm not sure. We'll see. But it looks, I mean, it looks great. And I, I still haven't even adjusted the colors.